Hello, hello. Welcome back. I've been gone for a while, but I, I think I've got some good ideas coming up. Some stuff I've been learning recently. Just nice little tips that aren't necessarily how to build anything particular, but just how to organize your code a little bit more nicely. So today we're going to look at shaders, this being a snazzy shader, and how to separate your files out really nicely. First of all, let's get this example going so I can show you where things aren't so nice. So I've got just a really simple index.html here. I've got a little prettier to keep things prettier, but there's nothing. This is like the HTML5 um, default with a little style in it just to, to make it nice. And I'm going to copy everything between the body tags of that shader example. So that's this Nazi shader. So copying everything between the body tags, I'm going to put out between the body tags in my example. And then I'm just going to run live server, which is nothing fancy. It's not a builder. It's not an anything. It just takes, it just runs a server in whatever folder it's in. It doesn't do anything smart. It's not like parcel or anything. It's just a simple, basic HTTP server. So this isn't looking as good as, where is the example gone? As this is looking. So what's going wrong? It's just our three setup. So I think if we do, I think I had a practice run and I know exactly. Pretending I know this stuff offhand. Cool. So now we have three in place. So that was just the import here. Let me collapse that for a second so you can see everything a bit more nicely. So let's run through what's in this example. We have this snazzy shader. Where is that coming from? So this is a basic setup for three. We've got our camera, scene, render, some uniforms. We've got a container element, which is up here, where we're showing. That's where the, the canvas is going to go. We've got some geometry, camera, scene, uniforms. Our material where our shaders are, a mesh to display it, renderer, resize, all the usual bits and pieces. Let's even tidy some of this up so we don't get distracted by it. So what we're really interested in is the shader material where we're getting a an element with an ID of vertex shader, getting a sex content, putting it in the vertex shader, similarly with the fragment shader. So what are they? They are these ugly script tags. They make a lot of sense for the demo. You want everything in one file. But if you're actually building a project, there's no way you want random script files on the top of every page. Or what if you don't want that shader in a particular scenario? It's, it's just not nice to have random chunks of scripts for stuff that shouldn't be. So let's see what we can do about getting these into their own file. The problem is they are a GLSL format. We can't we can't import that into JavaScript. JavaScript doesn't know what to do with it. Let's try it out. So if we made a actually let's make a new folder and spell it right shaders. So we're gonna put all our shaders in here. So if we try to make a vertex.glsl and we grab the contents of the vertex shader, pop it in, give it a save. So it's all syntax highlighting, like um, VS Code knows this is GLSL. It's all good. But where we hit trouble is now, if you get rid of this and we try and import that, which you might be used, this is where I got confused at the start. In parcel, I was able to just say import vertex from, and I could give it that vertex.glsl. Then I could take that variable, so it would go and get the contents of this file, and in our material, 
just pop in Vertex, easy peasy. And then Parcel would go and it would download GLSLify, would set up everything that needs to happen in the middle there so that our Vertexes, our shader, comes through. But if we try this, it's just going to go... We don't... Oh, actually, I've... It's, it's first of all giving me a 404 because I've gone to the wrong folder. So if we go to shaders and make the folder uh, non-JavaScript mime type, blah, 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 blah. Essentially, JavaScript says, don't know what a GLSL is, can't help you, error. So it seems like we're stuck, but we know that we can use it in JavaScript when it's this kind of... So this is essentially working like a string. Usually you'd see shaders in the examples between backticks. So how can we get that going? So the backticks are in JavaScript, so we need to make this a JavaScript file. Let us rename it to instead of .glsl.js and make it a string. So let's say const vertex equals this string and then um, export default vertex and now if we go back and instead of importing it as a glsl file we import it just as a javascript file so that's going to go in and give us this string just as a string which is perfectly valid for three it knows what to do with a string of GSL, uh, GLSL code, even if it's not officially a GLSL file, it can work out what, is it, what the string needs to do. So if we save that, we're in action. Amazing. But there's little, just a little issue. We've lost our syntax highlighting. If we go back to, let's actually just duplicate this, copy. And if we go back and make this copy a GLSL file again and have a look at that, we'll get rid of all the JavaScript parts. I've done this kind of back to front. You know what I'm talking about. So we have GLSL syntax highlighting like GL position, kind of keyword, VEC4, the green on the, the one here. I'm sure if we put in and get rid of a Okay, so it's not giving us any hints there, but it's it's highlighting it for us, but it's not here. How do we get around that? Luckily, there's a lovely extension, which is this one. If I can make it bigger so you can see it properly. Comment tagged templates. So what this gets for you is you can... See the way you can put in a comment before your tag or your string and it will highlight your string as if it was in that language. So let me show you what I mean. So here we have a string. So we want it to be in GLSL. So we can say GLSL, finish the comment and bang, we've got our syntax highlighting. It's perfect. That's exactly what we want. We have a separate file for our shader. We've got syntax highlighting. We can bring it in and out when we need it. That's amazing. So let's do a little recap and show you the fragment shader working the same way. I can get rid of this GLSL file as well now. So fragment.js. So what are we going to do? What's happening here again? We've got fragment shader in a shader material, but that's currently coming from this script tag up above, which we want to get rid of. So let's start there. We'll grab the whole thing. Cut it. Get rid of this ugly script tag. Come to the fragment shader. Paste it in. Well, that's not exactly what we want either because it's javascript not glsl so we need to make it a variable so call it fragment and then just select everything put it in a backtick 
and then export default fragment. Cool. But see now how it's all gone just orange. We can't can't see our highlighting anymore. So we put in our comment, GLSL. Amazing. We've got our highlighting again. But it's broken over here because we're still referencing what was the script tag. So we just need to update that to fragment, which will give us another error. Fragment's not defined because we still need to import it. And there it's working again and all with separated shader files. So now we can keep them all nice, tidy, neat, out of the way and just work on our JavaScript. Everything separated. JavaScript's doing what it's supposed to do. GLSL's doing what it's supposed to do. I think that's a nicer way to work. I hope that's some kind of use. Cheers.